Hello, I'm Lori Lane Zucker, founder and CEO of Impact Entrepreneur, and we are here at the Asia Pacific Impact Investing Summit in Sydney, Australia, doing interviews for Impact Entrepreneur TV. I am sitting with uh, Sarah Brown and Marlene Spencer. And uh, Sarah, what is the name of your organization? Uh, so everyone knows this is the Purple House, but our official name is Western Desert Ngunnawal Chapalinjaku Jitku Aboriginal Corporation which is why people call us the Purple House. <laughs> yes, I'm not going to attempt to, to pronounce that. Um, what do you do? Uh, so we're an Aboriginal community-controlled health service. We started with an auction of paintings at the Art Gallery of New South Wales and people from the Western Desert, so many hours drive west of Alice Springs, which is in the middle of Australia, um, painted pictures and raised money. The aim was to get their family members home from Alice Springs back out to their community even though they needed dialysis three times a week. So they needed, they had end stage renal failure and they needed to be on dialysis to stay alive. We did that, we got a machine out in Kintore in 2004 and these days um, we've got 18 little clinics in remote communities across the Northern Territory, WA and South Australia and Aboriginal people from the remotest part of the world probably have come up with this model of care which is about looking after people on country, doing things the right way, um, looking after staff. It's become quite an extraordinary movement. Sounds it. Now you're the CEO, yeah. correct? Yes. And Marlene, you are the treasurer, is that correct? Yeah, I'm a treasurer. Mm -hmm. Now, what, what is your history and involvement with the organization? Because we'll start, start from starting you know, out, trying helping people with the kidney disease. There's a lot of people dying. 2003, we start helping people and the sick people. But we'll raise the money with this, with the self, you know, 2003. Because government didn't help us. Our people been painting. All men and men. That's why we had a money of one million dollars. So you're, uh, so you've raised a good amount of funding uh, er, in earlier stages of your work. Where has that funding come from? So it was the sorry. <coughs> So it was the auction originally, um, and over the years, we've um, communities have um, allocated us mining royalty money. We've had more exhibitions. We started to get little bits of money from the government, but we kind of we didn't fit. Um, the Commonwealth government would say that dialysis was hospital business, and so it was state and territory business. And then the states and territories would say that all their money was going to the hospitals, and there wasn't any mo money left for us. But what happened was, because this is a real family-centric, community-controlled model, where we're attracting really good nurses to come and work and live in really remote parts of Australia. Our outcomes are extraordinary. We've gone from the worst survival rates on dialysis in the country to the best. So you will live longer as a Purple House patient on dialysis than you will if you're a non-Aboriginal person in Sydney. Um, and so what's happened for us in the last 12 months is that a Medicare item number has been created around our model of care. So we can actually claim for each dialysis that we do in a remote community. And that's changed everything for us because Medicare, you know, if, if you've got a funding agreement it's two or three years and you're worrying about who's going to be the Prime Minister next week and whether policy is going to change, Medicare item numbers don't disappear. So for the first time it's given us, we can predict how much income we'll, we can do on with the dialysis that we've got in remote communities but it's also an opportunity for people who want to invest with us or support us philanthropically that they know that if they can help us with the infrastructure, the dialysis clinic and somewhere for a nurse to live, as soon as we open the doors 
we make $610 for every dialysis that we do. So it's it's a safe model. It's not it's not something that if people invest or come to be friends with, with the Purple House that um, in two years' time we're going to say we can't afford to... St- so, so it's changed. Every, it's like waking up on a different planet. But um, it's been 17 years for me working with this mob. It's been an absolute... I'm learning new things every day. People have been... They had a problem and they came up with their own solution that no-one believed would work and now everyone wants a bit of it. And along the way, because of the cultural priorities of remote Aboriginal people, then we've also built up aged care services and looking after um, disabled people. Got a really successful bush medicine social enterprise um, and even designed and built our own um, mobile unit, the Purple Truck, which featured on Australian Story this year because we dialysed um, the Australian actor Jack Thompson in, in our purple truck in Kakadu so that he could make a movie. Yeah. So so it's it's really extraordinary and Pintaby people from the Western Desert are incredibly proud of what they've achieved, incredibly generous in sharing that knowledge and that, that those skills with other communities outside their own language area, but also are really see cross-cultural um, understanding is a really important part of what they do. So it is quite extraordinary. Marlene, I, uh, I'm more familiar with the challenges that Indigenous peoples in the United States uh, have had getting uh, the services and the funding to support um, health-related uh, challenges in those communities. Have, uh, doing this work oh, for as long as you have, have do you feel that the uh, that there is now more recognition and support uh, for the the needs that your organization is addressing in uh, the p- political realm and in the in the uh, in investment realm is is progress being made so, so Nancy, I reckon the question is about do you think it's getting easier as we get more and people more know more about us are we yeah. getting more support yeah but now we're getting a getting lot of report from other peoples. They all today, like this year, last year, that was really good. No sick ones. People start moving back to the, back to the own country, stay with the own country and look out and grandkids, son and kids. Because, because why? They miss the country, you know? They want to go move to their own country back to the community. They don't like to stay in the Hell Spring. They're getting lonely, you know? That's why we'll try and help him from Babylon. But they, now everybody was really good now. Happy in Hell Spring living. One friendly place, Babylon in Hell Spring. Marlene, you're, you're really good at teaching non-Aboriginal people, inviting them out to your country and becoming friends and teaching them some language. And, um, and, and that openness to sharing, I think, has been a really important part of the purpose. We could have just focused on sick people and getting them back to country, but people saw busting some stereotypes and actually um, helping people to connect across the world with the Purple House story because Kintor is seven hours drive west of Alice Springs. It's a little remote desert community that not many people in the world have ever heard of. They might if they're into art, um, but other than that, they but um, Pintaby people have been really open about teaching and and sharing their stories with other people and fostering understanding. And Marlene's the queen of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have lots of people who, who come for a visit, don't you? You take them out. Yeah, because I'm a good person, you know. Even what was in the community, they're really proud for me. Uh, we are, I'm helping, you know. I'm still we're working together here and me. For them, especially my 
family from Kinto and some from Walpuri people too, from Yondomo, Nyirpi, and from Kiwirkura. They really proud. We'll keep going and helping people. Yeah. Can you give me the website domain name of uh, your organization so people can get more information? Yeah, um, www.purplehouse.org.au. Purplehouse.org.au. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining me.